Have you ever wanted to do something completely out of your comfort zone and maybe you were really scared about it? Then this video is for you, especially if you have any interest in doing a backpacking trip. So in the True Tribe, I have a guest speaker every single month and it usually is somebody from the outside. It's a woman. If you're listening to this and you have anything to share with women over 50, please reach out, for, reach out to me. But I also like to ask my True Tribe members to be guest speakers themselves. And one of our members, one of our youngest members, as a matter of fact, Rachel, this year did the circumference of the Lake Tahoe Trail. So she did the entire rim, which is 174 miles. She's been talking about this for a long time. This is actually a small goal into another big goal that she's gonna have, but you'll hear about that later in the video. But she did such an amazing presentation about everything that went into it really some good highlights and if you ever have interest or you're just curious go ahead and watch this video and if you stay till the end that there's a little bit of loving going on in the tribe because we're talking to her about it and it's just a really cool video i usually do not make these public but i thought this was a really good one to make public so i hope you enjoy it don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you really like it and please share some comments all of this stuff really helps my algorithm. So A, if you're a subscriber, thank you for that. But if you're not, I'd love for you to subscribe and just be part of my YouTube community. So here it is. All right, welcome to our August guest speaker of the month. Take it away. All right, I'm gonna share my screen. So hopefully this worked a moment ago. So <laughs> it should work in theory. All right. Can you guys see it? Are we all good? Cool. All right, I see some thumbs up, so that sounds good. All right, so for everyone, I'm Rachel. I'm part of the True Tribe. I've been in the True Tribe since, I don't even remember, for years now, years now. Um, and this summer I um, took on the Tahoe Rim Trail in California and Nevada, which is a long distance trail um, via backpacking. So um, a little bit more about the trail itself. <laughs> Um, it's 174 miles by my mapping, um, and it basically goes around the entire Lake Tahoe Basin. So it goes into California and into Nevada, and it's actually above the lake. There's a common misconception that I'm just like walking along the shore of Lake Tahoe, but no, um, the trail's up in the mountains surrounding the entire lake. Um, so over the entire trail, you gain a total of 28,000 feet over those 174 miles. So um, the first question I usually hear when I say I did this um, is how long did it take you? And overall, I was on the trail for 14 days and 13 nights. So on average, I was a little over 12 miles a day. Um, and, um, the most miles I ever did in one day was 22.3 miles. Um, in an average day, I gained about 2000 feet of elevation. Um, but on that day where I hit 23 or 22.3 miles, I gained about 4,000 feet in elevation. And this is all with a pack on, as you can see in the picture on the slide. So um to prepare for this it actually was like a trip that was about two years in the making um so i had to do a lot of background research on this um many of you know that i actually had an ankle injury in 2022 that i had surgery for in 2020 early 2023 so my couch days were spent literally planning this trip um, and then uh, my original plan was to go last summer, but there was too much snow and I could not go. Um, so luckily um, in preparing even more and doing more research, I helped make my trip even more smooth this year. Um, and then I signed up for a Knowles a Wilderness First Aid and Medical class, um, which really helped embolden me to go into the wilderness um, with friends and feel confident and comfortable uh, doing that because I got a lot of applicable skills that I can even take to trail running or just hiking or even walking. Um, and that was a really integral part in my entire journey because it did not go as planned. Um, and having kind of that background experience and knowledge at my side really felt, I felt empowered to go out there and take it on. 
Um, so the other way that I needed to prepare for this was the physical aspect. And in order to do this, um, I did a lot of weighted hikes where I would pack up my pack with just like literal like hand weights or ankle weights. I would stuff them in a backpack and literally do my normal, like I was doing my long runs um, with the backpack on and just hiking them or power hiking them. Um, and I was doing those for a couple months out from my trip. Um, I also went on a trial trip and some of you um, have heard some of the stories. Um, Keisha and I went up to the rim um, and did an overnight backpacking trip and it went horribly. Um, and I got a lot of um, mistakes made that I learned from in like a shorter time period. Therefore, I could kind of smooth out those kinks before I went on something as grand as the Tahoe Rim Trail. So it's all about kind of testing it out and building up your confidence going into um, that a trip of this magnitude. So um, the other common question I get is, what did you eat? <laughs> um, and um, I honestly ate pretty much the same things every day. Um, I started the day with basic oatmeal. Um, I had tortillas with pretty much anything in it. Um, I usually did almond butter or almond butter and jelly, um, or as pictured on here, almond butter with M&Ms, Oreos. When you're backpacking, honestly, um, it's a bit of a bottomless pit sometimes. Um, so I would really eat anything that I had available. Um, the other thing was that I needed to eat things that I could carry with me and also prepare on a trail because I'm not, you know, stopping at camp and bringing a big, you know, kitchen kit. Um, so your options are really limited when it comes to backpacking. So you're going to have to really think about it strategically with how much you want to actually carry because food is the heaviest part of your pack and what you will feel like eating at the end of the day of walking. Um, so um, I will say that my favorite foods that got me motivated to get like up and over passes or climb up to a peak that I had to go over, um, I was really motivated by Goo Stroop waffles. They were like my just creme de la creme on this trip um, and I loved them. Um, and then also peach rings, like the little candy peach rings were a big motivator. So um, for those of you who are maybe diet conscious, um, backpacking is not the place for it because um, it's honestly whatever your body wants, you got to give it to it. So um, I am not a typical soda drinker, but when I got into town, all I wanted was orange soda. I don't know why. I never usually drink it. That's what I was craving. So um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about bringing food onto or in a backpacking trip. Um, I get a lot of questions. You carried two weeks worth of food with you. And I just want to say I didn't carry that much food at one time. Um, so I actually had to stop twice on my trip in those 14 days to go into towns where I was able to buy more supplies or buy, buy more food. So I actually was in town four days into my trip and then again on day 11. Um, and then I had to carry all of my food in this bear canister, which is in that yellow ring. And the bear canister is actually a mandated piece of equipment for backpackers in the um, this part of Tahoe. Because if anyone's been to Tahoe, I'm pretty sure, Susan, you were in Tahoe recently, right? That's what I thought I saw someone was in Tahoe and they saw bears. So um, bears are very common in this area so you have to have a hard-sided container to protect your food and therefore also you and even more so the bears so everyone gets protected with the bear canister um and so um, all your food has to go in there and all your scented items go in there as well um but i stopped in the city went to a grocery store that was nearby um and i bought other just dry foods like instant pastas or instant mashed potatoes ramen um, I also eat a lot of couscous when I backpack. That's my kind of go-to with backpacking because it's easy to just put in some water that you boil in a pot um, and then rehydrate it. And then it's good to go after like a few minutes. So um, the other aspect that you have to worry about is what do you drink? Um, I was drinking about four to six liters a day of water. Um, and in that I actually drank element electrolytes every day. I had either one packet 
or if I knew I had a really rough day or if it was really hot um, and I was sweating a lot, I would have two packets of Element. Um, to have a little bit more variety, I also used a caffeinated meal if I needed just a caffeine boost. Um, I did have coffee with me um, in the mornings, but I only honestly drank it a few mornings out of all 14 days. Although I went into it thinking, I'm gonna have coffee every morning. But um, you know, your body wants what your body wants. And that's something that I really learned um, in backpacking of what my body needed, it craved it. And when it wasn't craving coffee, I knew I didn't need it. So um, I kind of adapted to that as I went. Um, so, and like I said, I was really into soda when I was in town. I don't know why, but it was just the best thing since sliced bread. Um, so yeah. Um, for the water, um, you can't just carry all of that water with you. Um, if you guys are familiar with the weight ratios, one liter of water is like 2.2 pounds. So you have to filter your water. Um, so you gather water from a lake or a stream using like some kind of bag like this that I'm holding in my hands right now. Uh, this is called a knock bag. Um, so you literally just like in that picture, you open up the wide mouth, you scoop water into it. Then you hook up um, a water filter like I have right here. It screws onto this. And then you squeeze the water through and into, I was using um, just like a smart water bottle. Um, so you squeeze it into a clean bottle so that you have it um, to store. So um, with this, I used that, that knock bag, a Sawyer squeeze filter. They're all really lightweight. And honestly, um, my favorite pieces of equipment because they're so easy to use. Um, I did bring smart water bottles for this trip since I was out there for so long, but typically on like an overnight backpacking trip, I would just use like a Nalgene. Um, I also had a collapsible like water bottle, like a flask um, that I actually kept right in my uh, shoulder harness of my backpack. And I kept it in this little pocket that literally clipped to my uh, shoulder strap so I could easily access water. Um, because dehydration is a really uh, key worry um, on the Tahoe Rim Trail, especially when you're doing it in the summer. Um, as a backup, I always carry iodine treatments so that if for some reason I either lost my filter or it broke or froze or something where it's not functional, I have a way to treat my water because it's never a good idea to drink backcountry water. Even if it looks clear, there's so many um, contagions in the water that could really just mess you up and really ruin the trip. So it's always a good idea to have some way to filter or treat your water while you are drinking it from the backcountry sources. So. Um, the other equipment that I needed for this, and this is a very short list, there's a lot of little knickknacks, but these are like the main things. So for this trip, I'm a, I tend to overpack. So I have a pretty big pack. It's literally this big um, and it's 65 liters. And I have an Osprey uh, backpack, which I don't know if any of you are really like gear junkies like I am, but um, I love this company because they actually have a lifetime warranty policy. Um, on one of my very first trips, um, when Keisha and I were in the Sierra, I actually had a marmot chew through um, the pocket of one of the pieces on my pack. And I sent it back to Osprey and they replaced it for free. Um, so they are just such a legit company and I really do love their stuff. Even though this backpack is by some backpacking standards to be heavy, um, it carries all of my weight so comfortably that like I honestly didn't feel like I had much on my back because of the way it's designed. So it's such a good piece of equipment and I love it. Um, the other piece of equipment uh, was my shelter. I had a two person tent um, because Keisha and I went out together so we needed to fit both of us. Um, and then we slept, we both slept with quilts, um, which are basically just like an open sleeping bag. And honestly, I love it. And then um, we had sleeping pads. So my sleeping pad is about the size of a Nalgene bottle and it is inflatable. 
Um, this one is insulated, so it kept me really warm and on some nights way too warm. Um, so that's something that I'm gonna like, kind of like fin finagle on my next go around, maybe at the Tahoe Room Trail again, we'll see. But um, yeah, I slept on an inflatable sleeping pad. I slept super comfortably um, most nights. Um, I also had to bring my bear canister, which is the biggest part of my pack. Um, and then I have a stove and pot, which is pictured on the slide. It's really small. My stove is like this big. Sorry, I don't have it with me, but it's like this big. It's teeny tiny, super lightweight. And then you just screw it into a butane can, which is also pictured in that image. Um, and then I always have a first aid kit. This is mine. It's this small. It has everything that I ever would need um, in order to treat some of the more minor uh, things like cuts, burns, bug bites, blisters. Um, I think I even have an ace bandage in here and then just topical ointments, um, medications, stuff like that. Um, I actually whittled this down after my Knowles training because after I did my Knowles wilderness first aid training, I wanted to put everything under the sun in here. Um, but when you are backpacking, especially on a trip that is so long, you have to kind of make some of those decisions on what is going to be most practical. So that was a whole journey in and of itself, but I got it all to fit in this under a pound. Um, I also used a satellite device, which is one of the reasons why it was so, I felt so safe being out in the wilderness. Um, this device is a Garmin InReach, um, the mini version. And this actually allowed me to text my parents and my boyfriend every single night. And it sent with the text message um, a pin of my GPS location. Um, so this was a way that my family and my loved ones felt more at ease with me being out there. Um, especially when in a turn of events, I ended up having to be out there by myself. Um, so this was one of the pieces of equipment that I cherished the most because having that connection when I was out there by myself um, really made me feel a lot more at ease um, and a lot less alone. Um, so highly recommend one of these, um, especially when they go on sale. REI is having a Labor Day sale for anyone who's interested. They might have the, these on sale. I'm not sure though, um, but highly worth my investment and I will never change my mind about it. <laughs> um, to charge it, I brought a solar charger. This is one of the heaviest things. It's a pound um, and I'm looking into finding something more lightweight, but this is how I kept all of my electronics charged for the two weeks that I was out there because I was only in town a couple of times to charge anything. So this kept everything nice and fully charged. All right, and then the last thing were trekking poles, which you can see in the picture of me on the far left. Those trekking poles were so important in keeping myself balanced, helping me kind of balance my load because when my legs got tired, that's what I leaned into. So with all of my equipment and my clothes, my pack weighed about 30 pounds. When I added six days worth of food and four liters of water, that weight actually jumped up to just under 50 pounds when we set foot on the trail. I very much overpacked on the food and that ended up kind of evening out over the, the course of the trail. So like when my when I ended the trail, it was somewhere around 32 to 33 pounds instead, which is a lot more manageable. Um, I got questions about what I wore. I wore the same outfit pretty much every single day. It was a sun hoodie because there was a lot of exposed parts of the trail where it's just the sun beating down on you we happened to have a record breaking heat wave in Tahoe while I was there, which was fun. Um, and then um, I hiked the whole thing in ultra temp trail runners. Um, those actually really came in handy because um, we had to do a lot of water crossings. And um, if I had done them in my big hiking boots, all that water would have been trapped inside and I would not have had the ability to dry my shoes the way I was able to dry my temps. So like after a water crossing, if we sat and took just a quick break, I could take off my shoes 
and they were pretty much dry really quickly. And honestly, with the the cushioning of the temps themselves, they held up really well and I never had like feet issues. I nothing. It was perfect. Um, so, um, and then I just, I honestly hiked in what I pretty much would trail run in. Um, so it's at whatever is like most comfortable. Um, and then when I slept at night, because it did get a little bit cooler, I had just like some leggings that I wore. And then I had a thermal shirt to keep me warm, which I really only needed for a few days. Um, I also, whenever I backpack, I never go without my rain jacket. Cause if you don't bring it, it will rain. It's just a law of nature. It's gonna happen. Um, I did go without my puffy in a trial run um, earlier this summer and it snowed. Um, so I made sure to bring it to Tahoe and um, I only needed it a few days cause it really wasn't that cold. But it's always good to have those extra layers when you're backpacking because sometimes the weather can be super unpredictable. So it's important to kind of have a layering system to keep yourself from potentially being exposed to any elements. Um, I get a lot of questions of, well, was it hard? Was it difficult? Um, I would say that for a long distance backpacking trip, I think it was definitely hard, but um, I think it was definitely doable. Um, the major things that really were difficult was first the altitude acclimation. Um, this is hard for those of us who are desert dwellers um, because the lowest altitude you're at on the Tahoe Rim Trail is 6,000 feet. Um, but most days um, you're going to be above 8,000 feet um, for either the majority or all of that day. And so that's real harsh on the lungs um, and just your body acclimating. Um, the other big major challenge was the temperatures. We were at 95 degrees um, a few days, and that really did take a toll on my body and the way I was able to function, unfortunately. And that came into play when I had to carry water for a long time um, because we had one stretch without any water sources for 17 miles. And that um, was one of the days that was really tough for me. And um, I actually almost quit because of that. Um, I was really worn out on that day, but I got some nachos and I felt much better because I was in town. <laughs> All right. Um, I wanted to talk about how chi walking and running really helped me here um, because I always remembered to lift through the crown of my head. That's always the first thing. And I always heard Lisa's voice saying it. Um, and then um, something else that I was really cognizant and aware of was taking smaller steps. When you have that much weight on your back, it's really important to avoid overstriding. Um, and then on the downhills, your knees are just battered by it. So I really focused on leaning backwards and being very aware of how my weight was distributed, which is also where trekking poles helped. Um, I also have been working on hinging at the hip to make sure that I'm at the right alignment, which is um, honestly, I feel a lot easier to do with the backpack on for whatever reason. So I was like hardly sore and I had zero injuries on this trip. Um, tough moments was not all just pretty pictures. Um, tough moments. I had a charger cable fail so I couldn't charge my phone. That sucked. I freeze my first bear in the wilderness, which is what is in this picture. You can't actually see the bear. It had run off by then, but um, I was scared is all heck man all heck <laughs> um i think the toughest toughest moment was when keisha had to leave the trail because of altitude sickness um kind of that separation and then knowing that i was going back out there by myself was a very emotional time um like i said before hiking through the heat almost made me quit um, because I was also rationing water. So even though I was really thirsty, I wasn't drinking and it really affected my emotional uh, mentality out there. And then on my last day, this is like a sneak peek for anyone who is following on my blog about this. I sprayed myself with bear spray. Um, it hurt real bad. Um, luckily it was the last day and I was able to kind of like deal with it, but man, that was not a fun moment. <laughs> All right, now my favorite moments. Um, night one at Lake Aloha, which is pictured up in the top left, 
was one of my absolute favorite times. It is such a gorgeous place and I want to go back there so bad. So if anyone wants to come, let me know. <laughs> um, and then I almost lost my sandal in a diving in an alpine lake because it got sucked into the bottom, but I had a lot of laughs afterwards. Um, I also loved hitting all of the high points, like the actual altitude high points in our trip because just the views were so amazing and the feeling of accomplishment getting up there was just unparalleled by almost anything I've experienced. Um, I also got what's called trail magic, where a couple literally posted up in a camp's campground and invited all of the TRT hikers in and they gave us food. They cooked barbecued burgers for us, gave us chips, fresh fruit, the whole nine yards. It was awesome. Um, I also felt really accomplished hiking 10 miles by 10 a.m. It's actually a big backpacking like thing. Um, and I was really happy that I did it because I didn't think I could ever do that. Um, and then just my friendships and the camaraderie of the people out there was honestly, it reminded me a lot of the tribe where people are just there to cheer each other on, encourage them, help them. Um, my biggest takeaways uh, first is don't let fear keep you from either pursuing or accomplishing your goals. Um, I almost left with Keisha, but um, because I was afraid. I was afraid to go back out by myself and I knew that I was gonna regret it, but um, I didn't let that stop me. And now I have this really awesome experience to just shape who I am as a person. Um, my next takeaway is the kindness of strangers. Um, you guys might see in the top corner, a picture of a bunch of gallons of water. Um, people who had no affiliation with anyone on the trail were bringing water to trailheads for the hikers so that we could replenish our water. Um, they brought them on some of the biggest long dry stretches. And I just thought that was really, really awesome. Um, I got a lot of help from people along the way and it was very just refreshing. And then last, um, I found that if I can push my boundaries, I will feel so empowered. Um, sometimes we are um, a little hesitant to push that comfort zone, but the benefits of it can maybe far outweigh some of those apprehensions we have about it. So uh, you can follow along as I post more blogs via the Trek. Um, I've been posting more in-depth kind of um, synopses of what my trip has been like. So feel free to follow along on that. I have a link to it in my uh, Facebook and in my uh, Instagram. Um, and then if you are interested in backpacking, you can rent or borrow gear. Um, you can actually do this through REI. I would pick a local trail um, and just try it out. Make sure to educate yourself about that trail, about gear, what to do, um, and then just get out there or feel free to join me. I'm looking for people to who are interested in backpacking, maybe even for their first time to join me on a trip. Um, so if you're interested, I don't have a date set yet, but I would love to plan just like an overnight trip somewhere local to the Phoenix area. Um, no more than 12 miles, maybe around six to eight miles. Um, some great locations nearby are Cave Creek, uh, superstitions or Payson if it's not too cold. And I am looking for women in the true tribe or other women who are just interested in trying it out. So questions. <laughs> Stop the, this, the share if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. No, I'm just saying it. Cause I know we're right at time. You guys, yes, I'm sorry guys. No, no don't <laughs> apologize. That was amazing. Rachel. Like that was such a great presentation. Oh, like you. literally, I've got goosebumps, seriously, Aww. like, right it. like, oh my gosh. So, I mean, I know you got all the highlights, it's so well done. So if anybody needs to leave, I know you said you'd be okay um, answering questions. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to stay on as long as, you know, we need to, but that was fantastic. Really, really great presentation, Rachel. Thank you. Yeah, who's got questions? I've got a couple, but. <laughs> so. So you said it was hard when you were left on your own. Yeah. Um, how did that not throw you when you were expecting to have somebody with you the whole time? Um, honestly, with a lot of just challenges that are thrown at you in backpacking, 
what I what I've come to love about it is I'm I'm in real life such an overthinker kind of <laughs> type A adjacent yeah. um and in backpacking you have to throw everything out the window at a moment's notice um with going back out there by myself I had to really think about why I was out there what I wanted to accomplish it was kind of like remembering your why (laughs) Um, and the power of my why overpowered my wanting to give in to that fear um I knew that I was wilderness trained I had an emergency device to contact home Mm -hmm. I knew it was also a somewhat well populated trail so I had seen hikers every day we had Mm -hmm. always camped near people so I kind of felt this little the safety of hey there are other humans around if anything goes wrong which is ironic because my first two nights by myself or out there I was actually entirely alone which was a challenge um the first night was really really mentally and emotionally tough um but I I only cried saying goodbye to Keisha and (laughs) I tried to keep it all in so those Mm -hmm. those are my cries um but I'm like I wanted to do this I was really determined to do this I've been working towards this trip for two years and I just knew that I have other aspirations beyond the TRT. I do want to take on a long distance trail from Mm -hmm. that's like 2000 miles in the future. And um, basically, if I couldn't hoof it for 100 miles alone, how am I going to do 2000? And that's actually how Keisha had framed it to me of you have this opportunity. You can't you can't let this stop you. So sorry, that was a very long lived answer. Oh, that's cool. Thank Thank you. And I was actually, we were at Lindsay's at our mixer. I think Rebecca, I think maybe was there. I don't know. Yeah. Were you there? I don't yeah. know if you were the last one that we did in July. Mm-hmm. And it was the first time that her and Keisha had seen each other. And I wish mm-hmm. I had a camera because they just hugged each other. And I mean, I'm going to cry now just thinking of the moment, but just to see it was, again, mm-hmm. it's like a freaking tribe moment. Like, you yeah. know, it was just. I'm sure that it'd be so hard on for both of you guys and for you guys to both support each other and all of that is just amazing. And that's what um, I did write about this in my most recent vlog, but um, I just can't say enough positive things about Keisha um, because it was not a good um, situation for her to have to find her way back home because she had to do public transit and it was just, you know, (laughs) that's not fun at all and that's just a total pain in the neck and despite knowing that that was her where she had like what she had to do she still was like I will take that on to let you do this and I just think that that speaks really highly and that's part of why I love the tribe so much is that I feel like a lot of us women here have that mentality of I'm going to do what I can to empower other women to continue chasing those goals. How amazing was that? Um, You know, it just, when I watch that again, and especially when I listen to the end, that's such a great representation of uh, the true tribe in action. It's so hard to explain what happens in there. There's a difference between having a community of women, a bunch of women on Facebook and a lot of cattiness and all of that stuff that can happen, confusion and bullshit, frankly. Um, but my true tribe, we're isolated, there's no BS in there. And hey, if you're interested in wanting to check the tribe out, just send me an email at Lisa at the Running University. If not, just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it, like it, like this video, and go ahead again, make a comment. They just help my algorithms. I really appreciate it. Catch you later.